Hey folks, welcome back to Bold Like a Leopard. So you may notice not as many videos, uh, even the videos I do put out don't really get viewership. You might notice that the last one was 11 likes with like 17 views or whatever. So it's not really uh, beneficial to keep putting in a lot of work on YouTube. Uh, except for, you know, obviously I get along with a lot of the people that come to the channel. So yeah, if I'm making these videos, it's because, you know, I like to talk with some of you guys and, you know, hear from, from you and hear your comments, which are, you know, interesting sometimes. So in any case, getting past that, talking about the Mueller testimony that's going to be happening, uh, it's still scheduled for Wednesday. And, you know, pending any other uh, unforeseen <laughs> delays. It could be one of the longer testimonies. Uh, I remember when uh, Cohen testified back in March and I was at work and uh, <laughs> I didn't leave my seat for about six hours. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I kind of, I think at one point, yeah, I did go to the, I did go to the John or something. But other than that, I was glued to it. I didn't have any lunch or nothing, just sat there listening to it, I was riveted to the spot. And I think that having uh, listened to a lot of these congressional hearings over the past couple years, um, I've learned a lot. I'm sure many of you have learned a lot. And the people who haven't learned are the people who still hold out hope that you're going to see some sort of turn in terms of the Russian collusion narrative and whether Trump is going to face any legal consequences. Apparently, last week, the Southern District District of New York closed its uh, litigation case, or rather, it wouldn't be litigation, prosecution of Trump associates and, and Trump himself over the hush money payments relating to one uh, stormy horse face Daniels who is a viewer of this uh, show. But uh, in any case, how, how many more signs do you need that th this just isn't going to happen? If you're MSNBC or Washington Post or any of these other organs of the deep state, uh, you should know by now because you're part of the network of government and media figures that are putting forth the disinformation? Well, the answer is that those those that know are continuing to deliberately lie because they don't want to admit how wrong they were or, or the, you know, some of them were complicit in wrongdoing. Remember that both John Brennan and James Clapper, I believe, were or still are working as consultants for major media companies. I believe Clapper is with... Uh, Comcast, NBC, and, and, and Brennan, I don't, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. The fact is that they have uh, sold out completely. And the people who don't know, the people who still continue to hold out hope because of their own uh, delusions, are the ones who weren't important enough to be clued in from the beginning. So, yeah, there's people like Michael Isakoff and, uh, you know, certainly David Korn, who continue to put out the stuff. And I don't even read it anymore. I, I'm sure many of you have probably read a number of their things. And, and it, it, the, the narrative is never going to change. The whole tale that they've spun together just won't change. And it's the same thing that they put in front of us a couple years ago and keep getting us to try to swallow. Like it's, a, the, like it's not some sort of shit porridge, which we know that it is. So, <clears throat> you know... I would say that the continuing saga of the Mueller investigation and Russia Gate and Adam Schiff and his committee and the media it is evidence of two things. One is the same issue of media figures and 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 the deep state, you know, security officials who want to cover up their misdeeds from the past couple of years. So they're lying and they know that they're lying. And the other side is, this is, this is uh, you know, part B, is that there's a lot of people 
who have divorced themselves from simple everyday life in the name of believing in this resistance movement, okay? And I'm talking about people who should know better, okay? Uh, there's very few people who I'm connected to or who watch this show who have real legal training. You know, there's people I know who, who are lawyers, but they're not really into this case. For whatever reason, they don't find it that fascinating. Or, that you know, they've been they've been lawyers for so many years that they, they just don't care anymore. Like, they, they've seen everything that there's, there needs to be seen, or this isn't really their, their type of thing. And therefore, and therefore, a lot of what we've seen since 2017, when this whole Russian collusion nonsense really, really, really started to come out in the media, and there was the BuzzFeed story, and then there was... Um, <clears throat> then there was obviously the Steele dossier being published. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Th these coughs aren't going to get cut out, though, by the way. So <laughs> this is going to be unedited video. Anyway, so all of that stuff <clears throat> is, uh, it, you know, it's just more indication of the lack of real ability to learn on the on, on the part of these media figures. It's not, it's not just Democrats, by the way, because you still have people, if you, if you listen, for example, the, the Salem Radio Network, it's one of the few radio, like FM, AM radio networks that's available everywhere. So sometimes when I'm in the car, I'll put it on. It's not great, but some of the shows are okay. So they'll have at night, they'll have a guy named Joe Walsh, and he'll continue to spin this nonsense about Oh, the intelligence agencies are out there to help us. They're out there to uh, fight threats from overseas and fight spies and, and, and uh, terrorists and whatever. This guy is, is so delusional and he still believes that there is no deep state plot against the president that you could show him anything. And, and I, I would say that there is ample evidence that some of these people who are still deluding themselves, they might actually be complicit in the whole nonsense. They might actually be connected in one way or another, or they, 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 might, they might be getting blackmailed and, and <laughs> you know, somebody's telling them, you better, you better remember that the intelligence agencies are there to protect us and not to blackmail us like we're doing to you right now. <laughs> so, so that's the whole, that's the whole premise of what they do. A lot of these people, David Korn, Joe Walsh, uh, the, the letter that comes after their name doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really mean anything. What really matters is that they're able to continue to sell the garbage that they keep spewing out of their mouths. Uh, are, are some people actually that <laughs> idiotic that they still believe, A, in the Russian collusion, and B, that it will lead to any charges? Absolutely. Uh, I encounter them literally, uh, you know, by happenstance once in a while. And these are people that will never, ever, ever be able to recover from this uh, in terms of their own personal well-being, in terms of the, the way that they can put their, their own reality together. And that's, that's what I'm really talking about with the Part B. So the, the, first, part, the first category of people are the ones who are, who are deluding everyone else because they know that they've done something wrong or they've lied so much that they can't get out of it anymore. They have to continue to chase the lie. And <laughs> the second category are the people who bought the lie. And those people are, are just sad, sad subjects because they'll never, ever, ever be able to live down the fact that they've divorced themselves from, from basic reality. And that's why I was bringing up the lawyers. A lot of these people should know much better. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have the biggest grounding and. <laughs> In any sort, not 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 criminal law, not constitutional law, not <laughs> you know um, national security policy. What the NSA does, what the FBI does. This isn't the most sophisticated story here. You basically had a law firm that was hired by <laughs> the Democratic National Committee to buy some dirt on the enemy candidate. In this case, Donald Trump. And they went to somebody who was a foreign agent of the British government. And that guy went to foreign agents of the Russian government. And they concocted a bunch of nonsense. They sent it back. 
And this guy went and cooperated with a number of other people from the Clinton camp, such as Sidney Blumenthal and Corey Shearer. And they made the Steele dossier and a couple of other so-called dossiers. And that's that's what's basically happened. And the rest of it is, is uh, you know, there's there's other little tangents, you know, off to the side, including, for example, Manafort and this this uh, Maria Butina and, uh, of course, the, the Russian troll farm. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, tangents out there, and, and that's what they are. They're called tangents because they don't go anywhere. <laughs> you put a tangent on a circle, where does it lead to? Space, nothing. <laughs> so that's about it. Uh, I'm going to enjoy the hearing tomorrow. I'm going to probably watch it on the Hard Bastard uh, ch channel. I, I love that channel, despite all the weirdos. You know, a lot of the fans that are on the show are, are, are friends of mine. But, you know, there's, there's some weird people, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to try to get drunk during the during the hearings. Uh, I, believe it or not, these are entertaining to me. They should be entertaining because it, it, really at a certain point, look, congressional hearings are not supposed to be some place for political theater normally, right? Usually they're pretty boring. If you watch some of the ones, if you, if you just were to, I remember putting on C-SPAN one time when I was a kid, uh, I saw there was a channel called C-SPAN. What the hell is it? And the, the people that are on it are, are almost falling asleep. Of course, nobody would watch it. They've managed to turn C-SPAN into entertainment largely because these people have made a complete spectacle of the judicial system through, you know, this this uh, vexatious pro prosecution of the president and, and some of his associates. They've made a mockery of the legislative system. They, they haven't gotten, gotten anything done else in this session of Congress. And, uh, yeah, they've, <coughs> they've made a complete joke of the media. That's about it. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also subscribe to me on BitChute and on Gab and on Minds and on uh, Subscribestar if you want to donate. All of those are Chef Leopard, the screen name, except for Gab, which is Starscream85. See you later.